Okay, good morning everybody or good afternoon depending on where you're calling in from. Um, welcome to the Science Based Targets Call to Action webinar. We're happy so many of you can join us today. We have um, a 60 minute webinar scheduled um, and we should be able to make it through our presentation in about 30, 35 minutes, and then we should have plenty of time for Q&A. So uh, we're going to start with giving you some background on the initiative and then spend most of the time today talking about the call to action, which is um, a component of science-based targets, and then have plenty of time for discussion. Uh, since there's many of you on the call, we're going to take our uh, your questions through the chat box. So anytime... Um, during the presentation, you can start typing your questions into the chat box, and then we'll address them at the end. Uh, and then I should also mention that I'm going to start with an introduction, and then um, my colleague Alberto from WWF is going to talk about the call to action process, and then my colleague Lindsay from WRI is going to talk about how companies can get recognized through the initiative. So just as background, let's um, just talk about what is a science-based target so everybody um, has a, the same understanding. So a, tar a science-based target is a target that's in line with the level of decarbonization required to keep global temperature increase below 2 degrees Celsius. And this is the level that countries have agreed um, agree to where um, we think we can avert the worst damages of climate change. Um, at the Paris agreement, in the Paris talks in December, there was also an aspiration agreed to that we will try to achieve a temperature increase of only 1.5 degrees as well. So the Science-Based Targets Initiative is a joint effort with WRI, WWF, the UN Global Compact, um, and CDP. And the initiative was launched almost two years ago now, and our goal is to really increase the ambition of companies' target setting target setting practices and their climate strategies by creating this expectation that companies that want to um, be leaders on this leaders on the topic of climate need to set targets consistent with what science tells us is needed which is this two degree uh, the two degree target our objectives for the initiative is um, by 2018 to have at least 250 companies commit to set a science-based target and through a target review process we have we also hope to have a hundred companies with approved targets. We initially had a t um, also had a goal of having a hundred companies commit to set a science-based target by 2015 and as you can see we're already ahead of schedule and we've already have 160 companies that have joined. Uh, a second am, uh, ambition of the project is to use it as a way to demonstrate to policy makers uh, that the scale, the, level, the scale of ambition that is achievable of companies um, to influence international negotiations as well as national policies. And here's a summary of our progress to date. So you can see we have 160 companies that have committed to set a science-based target, 13 of those companies already have targets that are approved and that you can view on uh, the science-based targets website. And then we also have a large number of companies that are currently in the pipeline to have their target reviewed. There's three main components of the initiative. The first is reducing the barriers to adoption of science-based targets. We, our goal is to make this standard practice, so we want to make it as easy as possible for companies to set a science-based target. So we're developing um, a variety of tools and guidance to help companies um, to clarify, the, clarify how to do it and also simplify the process. So um, we are, one thing we did is created a new method to set a science-based target and it's called the sectoral decarbonization approach and that method is currently available 
and over time over the next few years we'll be expanding it and refining it and we'll soon be finalizing a calculation tool that's free will be freely available on our website that will help you simply to calculate your base um, like a, a benchmark target for your company we're also developing a target setting manual, which is like a how-to guide on how, on with best practices on how to set a science-based target. There's a first draft of it currently on the website, and we expect to have the final draft available, uh, the final publication available by the end of the year. The second pillar of the project is to institutionalize the adoption of science-based targets. And we're doing that by trying to get major initiatives out there to incorporate the practice into their effort. Um, and an example of that is CDP, where they're in, they've already incorporated science-based targets into their annual survey for companies, and it's part of their scoring methodology now. Uh, and the third pillar, which we're going to spend most of our time on today, is creating a critical mass. Um, like I said, the goal, ultimate goal is to make science-based targets standard setting, standard practice. Um, so we want to create a critical mass of companies that will help reach, help to reach a, uh, a tipping point where um, this is common, a common approach to uh, setting targets. And we're doing that through this call to action, which Alberto will tell you more about in a minute. So why should a company commit to setting a science-based target? We're seeing that companies each have a variety of reasons that are motivating them to set a science-based target. One is driving innovation. Uh, historically, companies have set very incremental uh, greenhouse gas reduction targets, but we're seeing that the ones that set the the very ambitious targets are the ones that are um, that have the 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 ability to drive innovation, or the and then building credibility and reputation. That is a common reason why you would set a science-based target. Uh, this is a way to demonstrate to your various stakeholders that you are gonna, you want to be a leader on climate change and you're taking the issue seriously. And if you want to be seen as um, an influencer in climate policy and have a seat at the table of discussions, then um, demonstrating your leadership through science-based targets is, is an important step to take. Uh, we're also seeing that over time, that more and more, that companies that set targets are also have, uh, there's a strong correlation with strong financial returns. So with that, I'm going to turn over the, uh, the presentation to Alberto, who will tell you more about this, um, the call to action. Thanks, Cynthia. Hello, everyone. My name is Alberto Carrillo. I work for the WWF International and part of the Science Based Targets team. And I'm happy to have the opportunity to uh, present the call to action today. Uh, as Cynthia already indicated the idea of the call to action is to create a critical mass of companies that set science-based targets so that these companies inspire and influence other companies and then uh, science-based target setting becomes a standard business practice. And in order to do that, uh, as part of the initiative, we have four steps. Uh, and uh, we're going to explain each of these steps in, in detail. Um, next one, please, Lindsay. So uh, the first step is uh, basically a commitment process. Next one. Um, and uh, the idea is that uh, companies first commit to develop a target in line with the criteria defined for the call to action. Um, and they have uh, basically uh, 24 months to develop the target. In order to make the commitment, we have a letter that is available on our website, sciencebasedtargets.org. Uh, companies can complete this commitment letter and then send it to our email address, info at sciencebasedtargets.org. Um, the commitment letter is received by our team, uh, and uh, basically that's all what is required uh, to sign up uh, for, the, for the call to action. Now, uh, the second step, um, Next one, please. 
The second step is to develop uh, the target. Uh, next one, please. And um, basically, uh, to develop the target, uh, we have a time frame of 24 months from the moment when the company submits the commitment letter to the initiative. Uh, and uh, we plan to send a reminder to companies six months before the deadline uh, to make sure that uh, we receive targets in time. Uh, and uh, there's a number of uh, resources that are available to help companies in the process of developing the target, uh, including the methodologies that are listed on our website, uh, the sector decarbonization approach, uh, methodology and tool, uh, which uh, will the, the methodology is already also available on our website, and the tool will be available soon. And then, as Cynthia mentioned, we are developing um, uh, a target setting manual that also intends to facilitate the process of developing a science-based target for companies. Next one, please. Then the third uh, step, once the target is ready, is to submit the target to the uh, Science-Based Targets Initiative for a quality check, which is basically a process to ensure that the target meets the criteria defined for the initiative. Uh, next one, please. And uh, I'm going to explain uh, a little bit more about this, uh, this criteria. Uh, the, first, uh, the first one is the boundary of the target. The idea is that companies set uh, company-wide targets covering all scope one and scope two emissions uh, as per the GHG protocol corporate standard uh, and when relevant also scope three. Uh, and um, Basically, uh, we are providing just as guidance uh, that when a uh, scope represents more than 40% of the company's footprint, then we expect the company to also submit a scope three target. Uh, in terms of time frame, uh, the idea is that uh, the target goes from five years to 15 years from the date of announcement of the target. Uh, and uh, we also encourage companies to set longer term targets, but we expect to have uh, interim targets in, in, in those cases uh, and to make sure that the minimum is five years. Um, in terms of level, on, level of ambition, and of course this is the most important uh, part of the initiative, uh, the idea is that targets are at least as uh, ambitious uh, in order to uh, uh, fulfill the long term the long term temperature goal of uh, keeping global warming well below two degrees uh, compared to pre industrial temperatures uh, and of course a lot of the methodologies that are available support companies understanding what this means uh, for for them um, and then uh, the the fifth criteria uh, basically uh, implies that the company will uh, disclose progress against the target on an annual basis uh, through reporting their or disclosing their uh, greenhouse gas uh, inventory. Uh, now these are all the, f the criteria that are required to participate in the initiative and these are the criteria that are used to assess targets submitted by companies but we also have some recommendations and next slide please. Um, <clears throat> the first of these recommendations is that uh, we encourage companies to set uh, mid-term and long-term targets, especially for companies in uh, energy intensive sectors, uh, uh, as we want to make sure that targets help provide a clear pathway to stakeholders about the decarbonization direction of the company. Uh, <clears throat> in terms of absolute versus intensity, both are accepted in the initiative uh, and we encourage companies that when, when relevant that they use both absolute and intensity to make sure that, well first of all that the target is transparent to stakeholders and also uh, to understand uh, the decarbonization and growth projections in the assumptions used by the company. Uh, 
The third uh, recommendation is that um, whenever there is significant changes uh, either on the company side or uh, on the climate science side, that companies uh, recalculate their target. Uh, as you may uh, know, a uh, key assumption in, in the target setting process has to do with the growth projected by the company. Uh, and so, in some cases, of course, this can be subject to uh, external factors and economic cycles. So, if there's any significant deviation from uh, the original target, then we encourage companies to recalculate the target. Next one, please. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> uh, at the moment, uh, the methodologies that we have uh, are intended to be used mainly to model uh, scope one and scope two targets. Um, but they can also be used to model at least uh, some portion of scope three emissions and scope three targets. Uh, as I already mentioned, uh, in the initiative, we consider a scope three relevant when it represents more than 40% of the total uh, emissions of the company. And uh, when this is the case, we expect companies to set uh, targets for the most relevant sources of their uh, scope three emissions as per the JG protocol uh, corporate value chain uh, standard. Next one. Uh, we have a couple of examples here of companies that uh, have already targets uh, and which we think are uh, useful to understand the level of ambition, especially for scope three targets. Uh, the first example that we have here is from Dell, a uh, consumer electronic company. Uh, and uh, basically, as you can see, they have a target to reduce emissions from their facilities and logistic operations by 50% by 2020 compared to 2010 emissions, and also to reduce the energy intensity of their product por portfolio by 80% by 2020. In this case, of course, this is the main source of emissions of their scope three categories, and therefore we consider the target as a good scope three target. The next one, please. Uh, <clears throat> the second example that we have is from General Mills. Uh, in this case, uh, they have set an absolute reduction target that covers scope one, scope two, and scope three. Uh, and basically, uh, the company is committing to reduce uh, their uh, total emissions by 28% by 2025 compared to a 2010 uh, baseline. Uh, in this case, uh, there's uh, non-CO2 gases are relevant and they are included in uh, the target. And of course, also the level of ambition of the target is consistent with a two degree decarbonization uh, pathway. So these are just examples to, to illustrate the type of targets that we are looking for in the initiative. Uh, we are working on case studies uh, that are available on our website and we invite you to visit the website to also learn about other companies that are participating in the initiative and that have already targets in place. Next one, please. Now, <clears throat> at the moment, uh, the initiative is really intended for uh, uh, companies that are uh, direct emitters. Um, but we are also encouraging financial institutions to participate and to express commitment to align their investment activities to uh, a two-degree uh, decarbonization pathway. Uh, however, given that there are not uh, methodologies right now that allow us to asset uh, their targets, uh, we cannot really review tar targets at the moment. Um, we are planning to work on this uh, in, in the coming months, um, and uh, we are inviting uh, financial institutions to express commitment by signing the commitment letter, and then uh, uh, to participate in the working group that is going to be created for this purpose. Next one, please. Okay. So uh, these are basically uh, the first three steps, and for the fourth one, uh, Lindsay can 
explain a little bit more about the target announcement process. Great, thank you Alberto. Uh, so my name is Lindsay Longendike and I work at WRI and I uh, help with communications on this project. Uh, so whenever a company uh, joins the initiative, either by committing to setting a science-based target or by having a target approved, um, it's really important to us to be able to give that company recognition and also to be able to um, to elevate the voice of the business leaders behind that business decision. Um, that's that's very important for us strategically, but we also think um, on a kind of bigger level, it's it's important to demonstrate the momentum behind. Um, you know, really ambitious climate action in the corporate space. Um, so at a minimum, um, all companies that join the initiative are listed on the Science Based Targets website. Um, also, there are some additional opportunities uh, for uh, companies to um, earn some recognition and to kind of tell their story. And a really great way to seize that opportunity is to elect a spokesperson. So what we usually do um, is uh, we kind of identify the person in the organization, usually either a senior uh, sustainability leader or um, a C-suite executive, and that person can speak for the organization and, and explain uh, why the company set this target, why why this was um, an important step for the company to take. Um, and also we really like to be able to, um, to have companies tell their story and explain um, you know, what, what challenges they ran into, how they overcame those challenges, uh, what steps they're taking to reduce their emissions, how having an ambitious target is um, spurring innovation in their company. These are all things that um, we really love to capture and to be able to share with our audiences. Um, and so I have here just a few examples of the, um, the types of activities that we do on the communications team. Um, so one, press releases, uh, you know, at certain key moments throughout the year, uh, we'll, we will kind of share um, the campaign milestone, so whatever number of companies we're at. And um, that's a great opportunity to kind of engage press and to, and to be able to um, you know, to, to connect them with spokespeople at your organization so that your organization can can kind of share latest updates with press. Um, we also tend to uh, participate at major sustainability events throughout the year. And then we try to keep a kind of steady stream of blogs, op-eds, that kind of content coming um, so that we can, we can talk about science-based target setting and corporate climate action um, from many different angles and, and be able to cover um, kind of a, a variety of topics that, that are relevant to this, um, to this, this action. Uh, so that's our communications work uh, kind of in summary. Uh, if anyone um, would like more information, I encourage you to reach out to me or anyone else on the science-based target setting team. And with that, I think um, we're ready to conclude the main part of our presentation. So we're going to open this up to questions. Uh, so please, again, if you have questions for Cynthia or Alberto, just uh, type those questions into the questions box and they will answer. Okay. So um, Alberto and I can take turns here. I'll read one of the questions I see. Uh, few companies truly have full scope three emissions inventories covering all 13 categories, very often just covering one to two categories. How can the 40% threshold be robustly and consistently applied? Yeah, and while it's true that the scope three standard has only been out for a couple years now, so there are many companies that don't have full scope three inventories, but it is a growing practice and we can see even through CDP surveys that many companies now have at least 10 or more categories of scope three emissions reported. Now there, there are 15 categories of scope three, um, of scope three emissions, but for most companies only T at least t maybe around 10 will be relevant. So for example, like many companies don't have franchises or they don't have leases or their leases are covered in scope one and two emissions. Uh, they don't have investments. So um, 
So for every company, you can eliminate quickly some of those categories and say they're not relevant. Uh, there's also now a tool that uh, GHG Protocol developed and um, released last year in partnership with Qantas. We developed a Scope 3 calculation tool. We call the Scope 3 Evaluator. And companies can use that and within just a couple hours, if they have the data hand, handy, um, can quickly calculate an estimate of their full Scope 3 emissions. And you can just use those estimates for your small categories. Of, of emissions. And then for your larger ones there, you might want to go back for those categories and get more data. Uh, but we really think it's important to use at least a tool like that to get a high level estimate so you can be focusing your efforts in the right place. Uh, and we do think with that tool available and other tools that are out there, it is practical now to um, to complete a full scope three inventory uh, and then we expect that companies are only going to focus their reduction efforts and uh, target setting and reduction efforts on their largest category of emissions so for example for a lot of companies just category one purchase goods and services is going to cover potentially 70 percent of your total scope three emissions so you could just focus your accounting and target setting efforts on that category or it may be category 11 use phase emissions again may be the majority of your emissions so you could just focus on that category and you won't have to continue to every year uh, calculate your every category of emissions and set targets around them. Alberto do you want to take one of the questions next? Uh, yes but I cannot see them. Oh, okay I'll read so them out to you. Please. Okay. Um, how can a company be sure that a target set is in line with the two degree decarbonization target? Any mathematical justification? Yeah, so uh, that's a very good question and um, we, first an announcement, we, we run two types of webinars. Uh, one is like this to explain uh, the call to action and we also run a more technical one to explain the different methodological approaches um, and um, yeah uh, I mean there's different ways how a company can basically uh, model what would be their fair share um, to, to, to meet the long-term uh, decarbonization uh, required and um, these different approaches are the ones that are included in the science-based target setting manual and also on our website. Um, so uh, we encourage companies first to look at those approaches uh, and uh, when relevant to use them uh, to model their targets. Um, we are also working on uh, an online tool uh, that will incorporate these different approaches and that will help companies uh, model their targets. Uh, and uh, for, for each of these approaches, basically, there is uh, an allocation logic behind, either assuming that, for instance, all companies undertake the same level of decarbonization effort or um, that, uh, yeah, that, that, the, that that efforts are uh, first uh, distributed uh, between sectors and then within sectors. Um, so um, you can you can read more about these approaches in our manual, and also uh, you can participate in one of the uh, webinars that we organize on a regular basis. Thanks, Alberto. Okay, I'll take an, uh, another question. Has the science-based target tool been used for local governments effectively? Um, I would say that our, none of the science-based target setting methods, except one developed by Autodesk, is um, appropriate for local governments. Uh, so we wouldn't, uh, and our target setting manual is not really oriented for local government use. So I wouldn't recommend applying our approach for local governments. However, the, or, the partner organizations are thinking about uh, ha having some type of parallel 
activity or effort uh, on science-based target setting for local governments. Um, so we'll keep you updated if that idea develops over time. Alberto, do you want to add anything to that? No, I, okay. I fully agree with that. Okay. Um, let me see, I'll get you another question here. Why are the targets only to limit warming to 2 degrees? Will this be updated to 1.5 degrees in the future? Yeah. So, uh, well, there's uh, two, two components to that question. The first one is uh, when we started working on, on these, uh, we were really taking 2 degrees as the main benchmark. Of course, now with the Paris Agreement, we are also working on uh, developing uh, guidance uh, for setting targets uh, that are consistent with the well below 2 degrees and 1.5 degree uh, trajectories. Um, as you may know, at the moment, there's no uh, very detailed scenarios that allow us to model targets with the same level of accuracy as, uh, for instance, uh, two-degree targets, uh, but we're trying to work with whatever scenarios are already available and to try to uh, encourage companies uh, to go beyond uh, two-degree targets. Uh, so that's the first, the first component. And then the second one is um, the, the methodologies and uh, the targets that we encourage companies to take as part of the call to action are really what we see as the minimum that companies uh, should be doing. Um, and uh, we're uh, seeing that many companies are going beyond that uh, and are taking really ambitious targets that are consistent with the 1.5 degree uh, decarbonization pathway. So in the process of modeling targets, uh, we encourage companies uh, to take existing models Models are based on a two-degree trajectory as the minimum, but to really try to think uh, beyond that and to, yeah, to also consider if the company is able to commit to targets that are consistent uh, with a 1.5 degree decarbonization trajectory, which normally is the same trajectory but within a shorter time frame. Mm. Okay, thanks. All right, the next question I can take is how does a company determine which method is best for them? And then, so in case you're not familiar with the initiative, the initiative supports seven methods to set science-based targets, one of, um, of which we developed, the sectoral decarbonization approach. And a good place to start with this is the target setting manual. Uh, even the first draft has some helpful advice about how to think through which method to use. But the, each of the methods vary about um, whether they take a regional or global approach, um, whether they help to produce an absolute target or an intensity target. So you have to think about which best suits your business. So you would think about criteria about where do you operate, what kind of growth rate you have, how, how homogeneous is your business, would you be able to come up with one intensity metric with, um, with a physical indicator like emissions per um, mass of product. Um, or if you're a very diverse business and you're growing quickly, um, an economic metric like emissions per um, value added or per GDP uh, contribution to GDP would may make more sense. So that will help you think through which method we are. Um, we have a, a, a table in the target setting manual with a list of questions to ask yourself when you're, and that will help guide you to which method may make the most sense. Uh, but we do recommend you um, calculating the target uh, using multiple methods um, that might be helpful in um, thinking through what target to set. Okay, go on to the next question. Many co colleges and universities are setting targets for carbon neutrality. Have you thought about applying this framework to the higher ed sector? Alberto, do you want to take that one? Yeah. Uh, uh, I mean, in general, uh, we accept carbon neutrality targets in the initiative 
whenever the reduction part is uh, clear and transparent. Uh, and uh, yeah, I mean that's that's the ultimate objective uh, required at the global level, of course. Um, but uh, since we are focusing on the reduction part, we really encourage companies to indicate how much they are planning to reduce and to make sure that the reduction part is really uh, in line with uh, 1.5 or 2 degree decarbonization trajectory. Uh, and uh, yeah, I think that's that's uh, the main answer. And then uh, in in our website we have uh, some some views about uh, the use of offsets as part of the initiative, which is normally something that is used uh, uh, by companies when discussing carbon neutrality. Not always, but in some cases. Um, so, uh, so read our uh, views on carbon offsetting within the context of science-based target setting future. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there's um, two questions here I'll combine. One is what free support is available for target setting beyond this webinar and the scope three tool you mentioned? Um, and then another question is do you need to pay for the check before it's published? Uh, so participation in the initiative is, f is free of charge at the moment, which includes the review of uh, your target. Um, companies can also submit targets in two different ways. They can fill out the target setting form and ask for an informal review, but they can also, um, if they're not yet ready to make a decision about publicly, making that target publicly available, or they can submit the target for a formal review. Another way companies can engage with any of the partner organizations is um, through to techni technical assistance for a fee. So if companies want more uh, hand-holding and um, help them walk through the making the decision about what method to use to set a target and help them shape the target, we do provide technical assistance for a fee. If you go to our website, you can see there are a number of um, uh, tools and guidance that we offer there. So you'll see all the seven target setting methods that are all freely available. We'll have this calculation tool um, freely available very soon, um, as well as uh, past presentations, the draft target setting method, the case studies, which I think are very helpful to read through to see um, the challenges companies, other companies had in setting their targets, how they overcame them, and what the business case is for those companies to set a science-based target. Okay, next question is, how can industry bodies such as green building councils encourage businesses across the construction industry to set science-based targets? Alberto, do you want to take that one? Things, India. Uh, well, uh, at the moment, uh, most of our uh, engagement efforts have been uh, with companies directly. However, we have also had uh, uh, some uh, engagement with uh, industrial or uh, yeah, business associations. Uh, for instance, uh, with the International Post Corporation that groups and around the world their targets based on Alberta you're cutting out uh, a little bit uh, methodologies uh, as part of uh, with uh, business uh, groups such as the International Post Corporation uh, so uh, 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 it's something that we are uh, willing to uh, get in touch uh, with, uh, with to discuss what can be done lately in, in this regard. Okay. 
Thanks, Alberto. Your voice is cutting out a little, so just to let you know. Um, are both absolute and intensity greenhouse gas emission targets required to be below 2 degrees Celsius? Um, and the answer to that is yes. Um, and it's, uh, I think that's a longer conversation about how each method works, so I won't get into the details here, but um, but we do allow both absolute intensity targets, but they both have to be aligned with a two degree pathway. I'll take this next one too, since it's quick. What's the average length of time for the review period? So the the uh, the review um, t the review process depends the length of time for the review process depends somewhat on how many targets we have in the pipeline. Right now, um, they're taking a little longer because we have so many targets that we're currently reviewing. But I'd say, in, on average, it takes one to two months to review the targets. Okay, hold on, I'm just looking through to make sure we covered most of these. It says, regarding the scope three screening, what level of methodological rigor is expected? Um, in the Scope 3 standard itself, we don't require any level of data quality. We do give guidance on how to um, assess data quality, and we also talk about, um, based on your business objective, um, you can make a decision about what level of data quality is needed. For science-based targets, um, for actually for any type of target setting and tracking progress, you're going to need pretty good quality data if you really want to understand um, how your performance is changing over time. But to do the screening, um, we expect you're going to be doing a high level estimate where you're going to be using generic you know, average data for most scope three categories. So there's no expected level of rigor. Um, Alberto, you want to take this one? Um, it's what are the challenges that companies face when defining science-based targets? Yeah, thanks. Yeah. So um, I would say uh, from the methodological point of view, depending on the sector where the company operates or if the company operates in multiple sectors, I think that's probably uh, the most uh, challenging part because uh, some of the scenarios are quite developed for some sectors uh, but not for all sectors uh, so normally there's uh, yeah some some uh, uh, technical uh, complexity involved in trying to identify the best decarbonization pathway for the sector uh, but there are different reasonable ways to, to address this issue uh, and I, I would say uh, from the implementation point of view, well, uh, normally uh, science-based targets will be more ambitious than uh, the previous targets of the company, so of course there is, there is a process of uh, internal buy-in. Uh, in general, what we have seen with companies that are participating in the initiative is that uh, it makes sense to them and it makes sense to the management team of companies uh, to set targets that are consistent with the sustainability uh, challenge that we are trying to address. So, so far we are not seeing uh, that this is uh, a main issue for companies, but of course it requires a higher level of effort and uh, yeah, I, I think this is one of the one of the main challenges that companies also face. I would just add that um, is that there's 
less barriers to setting a science-based target than we expected. Um, for many companies, they're telling us that, especially for the sustainability staff that have to sell these targets internally, um, that setting a science-based target uh, makes their life a whole lot easier because they can go to their senior management now and say this is what science tells us our target needs to be um, and they no longer spend much time debating on what target um, they should be setting and instead they start from um, this a target that um, they calculate through the, uh, one of the methods that we offer and then they spend their time figuring out how are they going to cost effectively reach that target. So it really just changes the whole conversation and makes, um, makes the process a lot simpler for them. So I think we've made it through the majority of the questions here. If there's any that we missed that you still want to answer, to uh, feel free to contact me or Alberto with your question, um, or if any questions come up later, please feel free to contact us. You can go to the sciencebasetargets.org website and there's a place to um, contact us there. Um, and with that, I think we'll finish up. Um, we're ahead of schedule. And thanks everybody for joining. We hope this was helpful and we hope uh, to get the opportunity to work with you in the future on helping your company set a target. Thanks very much for joining. Thank you. Bye.